This is problem number six from section 7.3. It says find all solutions to the following equation. Again, they're asking you to find all solutions, meaning we, we need to find every solution, basically an infinite amount of uh, coterminal angles that satisfy this, this uh, equation, which is six cosine t minus six sine t equals six. Now this one doesn't look that difficult, but it's kind of a, it's kind of a difficult problem, I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, the first step of the problem is obviously to divide by six. You got six in each of these terms. They're just trying to mask it a little bit. I think we can all see divide by six would be the best first step. Now at this point, uh, this is where it gets a little bit more difficult to see where, where do I wanna go? A lot of you will try to and rightfully so, try to get sine to be cosine and cosine to be sine. You'll run into the issues because sine, where our reciprocal is one over cosecant, uh, cos and uh, if we go to cosine, we've got one over secant. Those aren't the same, so we'll still have the same issue with, there be, with them being different functions. You might try to do some stuff with tangent but that's not gonna take you down the route you wanna go because you're still gonna end up with two functions. Uh, the one thing that you wanna do is you wanna realize that this is fairly close to, a Pythagorean, to uh, one of the Pythagorean identities. All right, it's pretty close to this whole sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. So uh, that's the thing that I notice there, especially when I tried to do like to convert sine to cosine and cosine to sine. And I wasn't having any luck. I, I started thinking, well, that's pretty close to this identity. What if I just squared each side? Because we've done that before with polynomials. We've squared each side, and that's kind of how we, it's kind of the route we needed to take. So that's kind of what I'm going to do here is I'm going to square each side and just see where it takes me. So if I square the left side, I get cosine t minus sine t squared equals uh, one, because one squared, well, let's just write one squared, that's fine. So then this will be actually cosine t minus sine t times itself, cosine t minus sine t equals one. We'll multiply the cosine t times cosine t, you end up with cosine squared t. Cosine t times the negative sine t will give you negative cosine t sine t. Negative sine t times cosine t is negative sine t, well, I'm gonna say negative, I'm gonna write it the same way. It's negative cosine t sine t. Finally, the negative sine t times the negative sine t is plus sine squared t equals one. Let's combine these two together. That's negative two of those. So I have cosine t, cosine squared t, minus two cosine t sine t plus sine squared t equals one. Now at this point, you might be thinking, uh, what, what good did that do us? Well, let's just follow the process and notice that sine squared plus cosine squared is one. We have both cosine and sine squared here. So let's rewrite this so it says sine squared t, right? Where this is all commutative. So sine squared t plus cosine squared t minus two cosine t sine t equals one. So all we did was rearrange uh, the additions and subtractions. And now we can replace sine squared t and cosine squared t with one. Okay, so one minus two cosine t sine t equals one. Now you should be able to kind of see, oh, that, that really worked out nicely because if I subtract the one, I get negative two cosine t sine t equals zero. And remember, we're always trying to get these things to equal zero to find those roots there. So now at this point, 
we're going to divide by negative 2, right? And it still stays 0. It's cosine t sine t equals 0. So I have the zero product property here, which is nice. I can say cosine t equals 0 or sine t equals 0. So at this point, this has really given me, uh, this has really kind of simplified the problem a lot, and all I had to do was square uh, each side of the equation to get to this spot. Now let's see, when is cosine zero? I know cosine is zero. Remember, we're looking at the uh, first term, we're looking at the x values. I know cosine is zero at uh, pi over two or 90 degrees, however you want to write it. Let's just write 90 degrees for now. All right, so this is t equals 90 degrees. Uh, I also know it's a zero at 270 degrees. And I also know that sine t is, so t, this sine t is zero, and we're looking for the angle. That's zero at uh, zero, so zero degrees and it's zero at 180 degrees. So once I know those, let's go ahead and write them up here, giving myself a little room. So T equals 90 degrees uh, to 70 degrees. We can say zero degrees and we can say 180 degrees. And I want to actually check some answers here. Now you need to check answers with this uh, because if you don't check answers after you square uh, each side, you're going to have some answers that don't really work there. Because when you square each side, you're essentially doubling the number of answers. That doesn't actually mean that's the, uh, it, it doesn't mean that we actually have double the number of answers, right? We started with an equation, it has a certain amount of answers. If we square each side, we can't just double the number of solutions. So what do we do? Well, let's go back to this one right here with this uh, cosine t minus sine t equal one. And let's evaluate this and figure out what are my solutions here? So I can say with 90 degrees, so I'm gonna check 90 degrees first, cosine 90 minus sine 90 equal one. Well, what does cosine 90 give me? Cosine 90 gives me uh, 90 degrees, that's a zero. Sine 90 gives me one, so minus one equal one. Well, is this true? No, it's not. So 90 degrees does not work. Now let's try 270. So we'll say cosine 270 minus sine 270 equal one. Cosine of 270. We know cosine of 270 gives you zero. Sine of 270 gives you negative one, so I have minus negative one equal one. Does this work? Yes, because that's a positive one. So this is one of our solutions. Let's try zero degrees. Uh, cosine of zero minus sine zero equal one. Well, cosine of zero we know is one minus zero so that's one of our solutions. Now at this point I'm thinking 180 is not going to work. Let's double check it. Cosine 180 minus sine 180 equal 1. And cosine 180 is, that would be negative 1. Sine 180 is 0. Does that work? No, it doesn't. So I have ruled out two of the solutions. And the other two are the answers to the problem. But they're getting, they want to know all solutions, right? They said find all solutions. So remember, I'm going to slide up just a bit. If we want to find all solutions, we want to say t equals 0 degrees. And if we want to find all of them, well, we're just rotating around 360 degrees. So it's plus 360 degrees n, comma, 270 degrees plus 360 degrees n as well. Now if we want this in radians, we know zero degrees is zero radians, so we can just say zero plus 
but 360 is 2 pi n. 270 is 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. And actually in this problem they want this solution in radians, which would be that right there.